Hello friends, I want to uh, welcome you to the War Room. It's, uh, this is actually our second uh, video that we're putting out. This is something I'd like to do uh, you know, on a regular basis from time to time as God stirs my heart. Regarding the uh, condition of the, of the church today, regarding the spiritual battle that we're all engaged in, whether we like it or not, we are. And uh, we can resist it, we can ignore it, we can neglect it and everything else. Pretend it's not there. And, uh, but friends, if we do that, then we will certainly fail. We will be defeated by the enemy. But if we stand our ground, if we stand on the Word of God, if we continue to pray and continue to, uh, to, to just stand upon God's Word, we will be victorious. Hallelujah. We will succeed in what God has called each one of us to do here on planet Earth in His kingdom. Hallelujah. Now, it's interesting because... Uh, when I first started the uh, videos for this particular uh, ministry, God laid it upon my heart to call it the War Room. And uh, shortly after that, uh, I had gotten a phone call or an email from, I believe it was from my daughter-in-law, Cindy, and she was informing me that, Dad, there's a, a movie coming out uh, very shortly. I think it's in August. And it's a movie about prayer, the power of prayer. It's called The War Room. <laughs> And I had no idea that this was coming out. So I believe what God is doing is he's specifically, uh, you know, raising up his people for such a time as this to really begin to lay hold of prayer once again. Because I don't have to tell you, I'm sure you already know, that prayer has been sadly neglected. The prayer closets have been, uh, you know, just emptied out. Uh, prayer meetings in churches are almost nil and extinct. Uh, because, friends, we just don't put value on prayer anymore. We don't see the need for it. And yet prayer is really the foundation of everything that God is going to do in this world through his people, his church. And so I believe that's why God has put this particular uh, ministry upon my heart to bring to you from time to time. And today what I want to talk to you about is just for a few minutes is the whole matter of uh, of, of, of not praying, friends, and, and, and not going to God with our concerns, not going to God with the things that are troubling us or things that are even trying to deceive us because the enemy is a master deceiver. He comes as an angel of light. He comes as uh, you know, a wolf in sheep's clothing. He comes that way today. He's, he's a master at it. And so I believe that many of God's people are being deceived from their true calling, from their true purpose, from the truth of God's word, I believe many of us are being deceived simply because we have failed to take these things to the Lord in prayer. I really believe that. And you see that so clearly as well in, uh, in the Bible. In fact, in uh, the Old Testament, one of the most powerful examples of failure to pray with terrible results is in the very life of Joshua himself. Joshua was a powerful, powerful man of God. He was a leader to Israel, and yet there was an occasion in Joshua's life where he simply failed to pray, and it was tragic. And we find that in uh, Joshua chapter 9, verses 14 to 15, and it talks about how God had uh, told Joshua to take the armies of Israel to go into the promised land, into Canaan, and to destroy all of her enemies. One by one, destroy the enemies. And uh, the Gibeonites had found out that uh, Joshua and, and Israel were coming in and they were destroying all of the, the, the different nations and tribes, and they, they became fearful. And so they, uh, they put on this great uh, uh, disguise, this great plan. They came to Joshua and, uh, and to his army and, and said, listen, we've come here to, to pray with you. We've come here to serve your God. We've come here to make peace with you. And friends, this is what it says. Joshua did not ask counsel at the mouth of the Lord, and Joshua made peace with them to let them live. What a tragic, tragic failure on Joshua's part. He was totally deceived. And the reason why, friends, is because the Gibeonites came to him uh, with a, 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 it's an incredible scheme. 
Uh, they acted like they had come from a very far, far, far journey, miles and miles away. And yet, meanwhile, they were only, you know, a three-day journey, just not even that very far. But they came with moldy bread. They came with dust all over them. They came with their clothes all torn and tattered. They came with their shoes with holes in them. They put on this incredible scheme. And it worked. It worked. They came to Joshua. The Bible says that Joshua looked at the bread. It was all old and moldy. They said this was fresh bread when we left. You know, I was saying we've come a long way. And so Joshua simply was deceived by his enemies. The very enemies that God told them to destroy. And Joshua ended up making peace. He made a league with them, friends. He made a treaty with his enemy. Why? Because he failed to pray. He failed to take counsel of the Lord. If he had only gone to God when, when this enemy had come, and came up with this wild story. If, if he had only gone to God, said, God, you see what they're saying. Look at, here's their bread. Look at their, their clothes that's old and their shoes are, are worn out. God, are they telling us the truth? God would have said no. God would have said no, Joshua. Do what I commanded you to do and destroy them. And because he didn't do that, friends, they lived to regret it. Now, this is an incredible warning for you and I today. It really is. The day that we are living in with such rampant deception that's come into the church, friends, such false teaching, all of these things, we've got to pray in order to not be deceived, to not let down our guard, to not lean upon our own understanding. That's what I want to share with you as I close this particular video today of The War Room. Friends, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, 5 and 6, do not lean, right? Do not, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Do not lean upon your own understanding, as many are doing today. If we lean upon our own understanding, if we judge matters according to our own uh, natural sight, or our own thoughts, right? Our own understanding. Friends, the enemy will deceive us and defeat us. And we can't afford that to happen. Not in the time we are living in. We cannot afford that to happen. We've got to pray. We've got to seek God. We've got to take counsel from the Lord. Because if we lean upon our understanding, we will be deceived. But the Bible says that in all of your ways, what? Acknowledge Him. That means pray. Pray. Get alone with God. Acknowledge God. And He will direct your paths. He will give you the truth. He will show you what's right and what's wrong. Hallelujah. By the spirit of discernment, friends. By simply praying. And God will show you what's right and what's wrong. And then you act accordingly. And you will not be deceived. You will never be led astray by the enemy who's out to defeat us. Who's out to destroy us. And God has called us to destroy the works of the enemy. Hallelujah. To, to, to uh, bring them into the light to bring them out of darkness, to expose them for what they are, so that that will set his people free. So I want to thank you for tuning in today to the War Room. God bless you. My name is Pastor Mike Knoll, and uh, be sure to tune in again, because we'll be, we'll be bringing you these videos from time to time in order to keep you alert and on guard as to what is happening in the world today, so that we will not be defeated, we will not be deceived. God bless you, and goodbye for now.